This is a classic physics problem where I have two different shapes rolling without slipping down a ramp. And I'm trying to figure out which one wins the race. And it depends on how much moment of inertia they have. At its core, this is an energy conservation problem. I have an initial potential energy of mgh for each of these objects but it's getting pumped into their translation and rotation in different percentages, and that's what changes the final speed. So I'm going to do a little bit of prep work up here before I get into the actual final speed calculations and say, okay, what's going on here is that for each of these objects, their center of mass is going to drop by a height of h, and so the gravitational potential energy change is mgh. Or I could say the initial is mgh and the final is zero. And where does it go? Part of it goes into the translational piece of their energy at the end. And part of it goes into the rotational piece. And then I have to use my relationship for rolling without slipping. The center of mass velocity is r times omega. I'm going to go ahead and use a capital R. Um, and that means omega is going to be v center of mass over r. So moving on to my next step, mgh equals 1 half mv center of mass squared plus one half i and this is the moment of inertia about the center of mass for each of these objects times v center of mass squared or i should say v center of mass over r all squared all right so we're going to be working with that for each of these objects to try to find the center of mass velocity by the time they get to the bottom of the hill so let's look at the speed for each of these objects i have a ball and I'll go ahead and apply this and just plug in what I is for the ball. So I have mgh equals 1 half mv center of mass squared plus 1 half times 2 fifths mr squared times v center of mass squared over r squared. And one thing you should notice here is the radius of that ball is irrelevant to how fast it's going by the time it gets to the bottom. So I didn't have to specify even a radius for each of these things in order to compare their final speeds. I'm going to cancel a factor of 2 while I'm at it. And I get mgh equals 1 half mv center of mass squared plus 1 fifth mv center of mass squared. And notice that the mass is also irrelevant, so that's gone. So on the left-hand side, I have gh. And on the right-hand side, I have a 1 half plus 1 fifth times v center of mass squared. So v center of mass squared has been factored out. 1 half plus a fifth, just because I'm short on space here, a half is 5 tenths, a fifth is 2 tenths, so I get 7 tenths. I'm not going to show a separate step in between. Solving for V center of mass, I multiply by 10 sevenths and take the square root. So I have the square root of 10 GH over 7. Um, another way to write this, which is handy for comparison at the end of this problem, is I could pull out the root 10 over 7 and write this as a decimal, and it's 1.1. 9, 5, root gh. All right, let's do the cylinder. Same basic idea. I have gravitational potential converted into two types of kinetic, part of that translational, part of that rotational, and my moment of inertia is 1 half mr squared. Um, notice that the radius cancels out. Once again, the m's cancel out of all the terms, and I end up with a gh equals v center of mass squared times one half plus one fourth this time. And a half plus a fourth, uh, that's three fourths. And I'm going to multiply both sides by four thirds. And I get square root four gh over three. And if I pull out a square root of four over three, I can get an approximation here, which is, is handy for comparison. So I end up with 1.55 root gh. Okay, now I can tell which one's going faster at the end. The ball is 1.195 root gh. The cylinder is 1.155 root gh. And so the ball is going to be moving faster at the end. The last question, so part B, is, is really just a concept question. Which one wins the race? Maybe it seems intuitively obvious. It's the one that's moving fastest at the end. Um, but maybe to dig into the details a little bit, Anytime these drop through any small increment of height, the, the ball ends up moving faster at the end of that small increment. 
And that means for every tiny interval, the ball is moving faster on average, which means it's got to get to the bottom first. So the ball wins the race. And I wanted to point out here just to aid your physical intuition, the reason the ball wins is because it has a smaller mo moment of inertia. So looking back at the formula back here. And that means as gravitational potential energy is converted into kinetic energy, less of it is going into the spin and more of it's going into the translational motion. So objects with small moments of inertia end up moving faster as they roll down a hill. 